Okay, Precal 10, here is exponents um, basically in a nutshell. I'll do some shorts for the individual exponent law components, uh, the more complex ones. But this is going to cover all of our grade 9 refresh plus a couple new grade 10 topics. So, uh, first couple things we remembered. The big one from grade 9 was negative base. And the big message is that there's a huge difference between this and this. If this is to an even power, it's all in brackets, it's all to the even power. That's what we called forever positive because it's an uh, even negative multiplied by itself an even number of times. This would be the same as saying that. Uh, if you had it to an odd power like that, well, that's always going to be negative. So we would write it like that. And that brings up the difference between something in brackets and something outside of brackets. If there's no brackets, this negative is a negative one. So it just keeps your statement negative regardless. Now we're not gonna see a whole hell of a lot of that going into grade 10, but you will see it as you progress through your work. And it's important to notice that anytime you have a statement where you have a negative sign in front, this is just a negative one. It is not affected by that exponent. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but that was a big theme from grade nine. And now I'll quickly go through the laws. So multiplication of a common base. So it's when we have a base that's the same and we are multiplying them together, we add the exponents. So here it is in play with a number. 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 4 equals 2 to the 7. It's the same with variables. x to the 2 times x to the 4, well, that's just x to the 6. So multiply a common base, add exponents. Division of a common base. Well, if you have a base and you divide, well, in this case, we subtract the exponents. So uh, let's look at this with numbers. 3 to the 7 over 3 to the 2. Well, now we get 3 to the 5. So when we multiply a common base, we add. When we divide a common base, we subtract. Power to a power, that's when we have this scenario. So when you have that, you multiply. And that means any sort of setup. So you could have 2 to the 3 to the 2. Well, that's going to be 2 to the 6. You could have 1 over 4 to the uh, 2. Well, that's going to be 1 to the 2 over 4 to the 2. The exponent comes in here and in here. Step it up a notch. You could have, let's give myself a bit of room here. You could have 2x over 3y squared all to the power of 3. Well, remember that 2x is just 2 times x. So this 3 comes into here, into here, into here, and into here. So you get 2 to the 3, x to the 3, over 3 to the 3, y to the 6, which would simplify to 8x cubed over 27y to the 6. You're going to see that in play when we get to the more complicated ones here in a little bit. So this is all still repetition from grade 9. And then sometimes, and then 0 power, so... 5 to the power of 0, well, it's 1. 3 to the power of 0, it's 1. Negative 2 to the power of 0, no brackets, forever negative here. But 2 to the 0 is 1, so we get negative 1. And then the power of 0 is 1. So what did that look like uh, as a combined operation? Well, it was something that kind of looked like this. We could have a scenario where we have uh, 3ab squared c to the 4 over uh, 9 a to the 2, and then I'll, I'll grow into a bonus here, b, c to the 2. And then let's put this to the power of 3. So here we're doing everything. First, this is coming into here, into here, into here, and it's power to power, so we're multiplying. So we have 3 cubed, a cubed, b to the 6, c to the 12. On the bottom, we have nothing new. We have 9a squared bc squared. And now what we're doing is we're doing our multiplication of a common base if we have it, which we don't, but we have division of a common base. So you can deal with the numbers however you want. There are some exponent tricks you can use, but it's also just compute and calculate. 3 cubed is 27, 9 on the bottom. Now you have a cubed over a squared. So you're dividing a common base. What do you do to the exponents? You subtract. So you have a to the 1. Then you have 
b to the 6 over b to the 1, so you end up with b to the 5. Then you have c to the 12 over c to the 2, you end up with c to the 10. So last thing left is if you can, do this division. 27 divided by 9, 3, and then we have a, b to the 5, c to the 10. So that was sort of the full meal deal, the most complex from grade 9. And now let's look at our new ones for grade 10. So the first one, which I may have uh, done with you if you were in grade 9 with me, is negative exponents. And the big theme with a negative exponent is if you have a negative exponent, it goes to the denominator and the exponent turns positive. The negative has no effect on the base. The base doesn't turn negative. All it does is it moves the base from either the numerator down to the denominator, or if it's in the denominator to begin with, it moves it up to the numerator and turns positive. So the sign of the exponent changes as it switches from numerator to denominator. You can prove this using the laws we had just learned. For instance, 5 to the negative 2 is equal to 5 to the 0 minus 2, that should just make sense, which is equal to 5 to the 0 over 5 to the 2. That's our division law. And 5 to the 0 is 1. And since all these statements are equal to each other, it just is logical that any of the two are equal to each other. So that is what happens with negatives. So now let's add that to our putting it all together scenario. So you could approach this a number of different ways, but let's look at it stepwise. I'm going to take the outer exponents and I'm going to water bomb them in. I'm going to do that first. You don't have to, but I'm going to because I like it. So what I end up with is 2 to the negative 2, a to the negative 4, b to the negative 6, and then times 4 to the 3, a to the 3, b to the negative 3. All of that is over a to the negative 12, b to the negative 4. I'm not going to deal with my negatives until I've done everything else. So I have 2 to the negative 2. Oops. I have... 2 to the negative 2, but now I can combine my a's on the top. a to the negative 4 uh, and a cubed, sorry, I also have times 4 cubed, I'll put my numbers first. And then a to the negative 4, a to the 3 gives me a to the negative 1, and then b to the negative 6 times b to the negative 3, I'm adding those exponents, give me b to the negative 9. Now you can, uh, and then a to the negative 12, b to the negative 4. You can actually work with your numbers here because this 2 is going to up on the bottom. And then we can do the exponent work at the same time. So now I have 4 cubed over 2 squared and then a to the negative 1 divided by a to the negative 12. I do negative 1 minus negative 12 which gives me 11. So I have a to the 11. For b I have negative 9 minus negative 4 which gives me negative 5. So b to the negative 5. So now would be the moment where I get rid of all my negative exponents. You can compute, but I'll show you a different way of looking at the numbers this time. When you get really good at this, you can identify that 4 is just 2 squared. That is 4. So you actually have 2 squared cubed, a to the 11, over 2 to the 2, b to the 5. And now my numbers will simplify. 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 2, and then my a to the 11, b to the 5. And then my 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 2, I divide. So I subtract. I end up with 2 to the 4, a to the 11, all over b to the 5. And that 2 to the 4 is 16, a to the 11, over b to the 5. So there's lots of happening, lots of steps. You could have done this a, um, a couple different ways with those negative exponents, but I would do it this way. For me, it's the most straightforward. So new exponent law one is negative exponents. New exponent law two, rational exponents. So this is an exponent that looks like this, one over n. So we have one over something. All of these are gonna be one over. So if you have four to the one half, the relationship here is, I like to use flower power because I'm gonna draw you a pretty flower here. If you have a flower, How nice is that? OK, 
Okay, so think about a flower in the garden. The flower portion of this plant is at the top. And the bottom of the plant is the roots. So when you have a fractioned exponent, the denominator is the root and the flower is the power. So four to the one half is the same as saying the square root of four to the one, which we don't write the one. So that's the relationship. If you have two to the one third, well, it is a cube root to the two. If you have seven to the one fifth, well, then it is a fifth root of seven. Remember, this is called the index of my root. It determines my uh, number of identical factors, but it is the denominator of my fraction exponent. So that is new law number one, just understanding that relationship between exponents and uh, fraction, fraction exponents and roots. Take it one step further, it's when you have something like this. So now you have a numerator and a denominator. It's still flower power. The only difference is now we have the cube root of two squared or the cube root of four. The thing is, is you could also write this one like this, the cube root of two squared. There's no difference there. And just think about that with respect to power to a power, because what you have is you have two to the third squared. If you multiply that together, you'd get two to the two thirds. And that's where the cube root of two all squared comes from. But you could also write that two squared to the one third, which is where the two squared cube rooted comes from. Either way, you're fine, but that's the new rule. So how do we use that? We use that in a scenario like this. Sometimes they're easy to simplify, sometimes they're not. Look at this first one. You still have a common base, so you do your exponent laws the way we normally would. We subtract them, so you have two over five minus negative one over five. What you need to worry about here though is do you have a common denominator? And we do. So this is just plus one over five, you get seven to the three over five, which is, if you want to convert all the way, the fifth root of seven cubed. Now, if you didn't have a common denominator, so let's do a quick example at the top here. Say you had a two to the one third over two to the one half. Well, then you would have two to the one third minus one half, but you need a common denominator. So multiply by two, multiply by two, multiply by three, multiply by three. This is grade nine fraction work. Two to the two sixths minus three sixths, which gives you two to the negative half, which oh, we'll go all the way back to our negative exponents. One over two to the positive half, which gives you one over the square root of two. It's all going to connect. Remember, you might have to watch this video a couple times, but I will do some short uh, videos for each of these rules. Now for the next one here, this is just water bombing into there, into there, into there. So now you have x to the four over three times negative 12 over five, y to the three over four times negative 12 over five, and z to the five over two times negative 12 over five. And you can simplify your fractions here however you like, but I'm gonna go 12 divided by three is four. So I have x to the negative 16 over five. Uh, for the y, y divided by four is three. So I have y to the negative nine over five. And then for z, my fives cancel, and my negative 12 divided by two, I end up with six. So I get z to the negative six. And that will all simplify, because they're all negative, to one over x to the 16 over five, y to the nine over five, and z to the six. There are scenarios where um, exponentials are easier to deal with than roots, and that's this last example. You can't multiply these together because you technically don't have a common base. You have a square root and a fourth root. But if you converted them into exponents, all of a sudden you have three to the half times three to the one quarter. 
which you can then change to 3 to the 2 quarters by getting a common denominator. And now you can just add your exponents, 3 to the 3 quarters, which you then get the fourth root of 3 cubed. So you can simplify it that way. So you're going to be jumping back and forth from radical exponent to root, radical exponent to root. And that is the gist of this section. That's it. Again, watch for those shorts for specific lessons, but otherwise we're good to go. Thanks, everybody.